All right, we've got uh, head coach Eric Ramsey following tonight's Western Conference semifinal. Eric, we appreciate you joining us. You've got uh, Andy and John on right now. There might be more that join later, but so far it's just those two. Uh, Andy, why don't you uh, kick us off? Eric, I, I imagine it's incredibly difficult night. How do you sum that up? Yeah, it's it's really disappointing because that's obviously not in any way how anyone imagined the game going. We, of course, knew the level of threat that the forwards posed, but um, had every intention of of this not being a game that was played in big open spaces. And obviously with the, the goal being scored so early, um, that sort of set the, te the, the tone for a very cha chaotic feel to the game, which is absolutely the opposite of how we envisaged that game being played if it was going to be one that we were going to win because they're a team that really thrives off chaos, open spaces to attack. And I, I felt like um, after that that really quick start from them and then our response, it was almost very difficult to claw back a sense of uh, a sense of evenness in the game. And um, I think once it once it's once that path was set, it was it was very difficult to um to to find ourselves with a with an a, a sense of evenness against them, which is which is what we wanted. We want the game. We wanted the game to be much more still, much more balanced. Um, and certainly, we didn't want to find ourselves giving away such such big space in the transition. So, um, as I say, yeah, the op the opposite of what we wanted. But um, I was really keen to stress to the players in there that it's not. Uh, it's not one that for me sours what has been an incredibly good year and a, a certainly a couple of months that I'm really proud of and the team is really proud of. So, um, yeah, not not as we wanted nor expected, but um, something that we uh, we won't let sour the season as a whole for sure. Can you sort of put your finger on what went wrong in terms of those big spaces in transition that we saw? I think we really looked like a team that hadn't played for three weeks and and really lacked that um that cohe that cohesion that structure behind the ball when we attacked we we knew it would be a game of of cat and mouse and obviously we've had a lot of success over the course of the last three months or so by committing extra bodies to the attack being more dynamic um creating 3v2s and 2v1s in wide areas through the the outside center backs or or one of the sixes, particularly Hisani, and um, we we didn't want to lose that element from our game, but we did want to. We wanted to be more conservative than we would be normally, and um, I just felt like we didn't strike that balance well. Where we needed to be really detailed behind the ball as we attacked, we were lacking in detail, which is obviously everything when you've got players that only need the the extra yard afforded to them in order to really hurt you. So there are obviously a couple of examples um, when the game was was even uh, numbers wise, where where we weren't detailed enough and then obviously once we lose a man then um they're an incredibly difficult team to play against with 10 men at home for sure so um i won't i won't sort of dwell too much um on the on the sort of tactical organization side when we were when we were down in that situation because i think that was um that was incredibly difficult for the players that were left on the pitch eric they had uh 70 percent possession i knew that you probably went into this game knowing that they would have more but just that volume just too much Mm, I think that's probably tipped hugely by the um, the end stages of the game. I feel like certainly in the first half, it was relative. It, of, of course, it wasn't it wasn't even in terms of pure possession volume. But I felt like in general, playing the first half, we restricted them relatively well. Obviously, we had a couple of moments where we we really switched off. Really poor goal to concede on set play. The uh, the goal they scored on the cutback was one that. I, um, We've, we've probably talked about a hundred times over the course of three games against them. So that's a really dis disappointing one to, to uh, concede, but I felt like the general balance in the game in the first half was okay. Um, I think it obviously gets away from you hugely when, when we lost the player and then um, I'm sure that tips it toward those extremes. But um, up until, up until that point, I wasn't um, viewing it as a disaster in any way, the balance of play in general, I felt like we were always going to be good value for chances on the counter attack, always good value for, um, quick attacks if we're able to switch the ball well and, and obviously good value for chances on set plays. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, more the nature of a couple of the goals that were really disappointing, I suppose. You you said in the lead-up to this game you felt like your team was a good match for anybody. Does this make it feel a little bit like, well, maybe we're a little farther away than I thought we were? I think there was, of course, in the back of our minds as, as coaches that 
there was always a prospect of the game not being a mismatch, but the balance being very much in their favour because of the nature of their front players. I think if any team in this in this league, and I, I'd say that for all all twenty eight other teams, any team gets that team on the wrong day with their front players and um, isn't able to execute to a really high level uh, the, the really important things in terms of restricting certain spaces, being really detailed in how you, you manage the space on the transition. Most teams are going to find that very tough. I think um, today it's almost that perfect storm of, uh, and I can't use the having not played in three-week thing as a, an excuse because obviously they're in that same position, but I, I, I feel like we, of course, suffered for that from a cohesion um, rhythm, organisation perspective. And then obviously when you add to that the way in which we started the game, the atmosphere, which I felt like we didn't deal with in, in any way uh, nearly well enough over the course of the first five, six minutes of the game, we, we made life difficult for ourselves. So um, I do feel like we are, cap we are of course, capable of playing um, a far better, far tighter game over a far longer period of time there. Um, and ha had we done that, we are capable of winning that game for sure. So I don't feel particularly differently in general about this group, about this project, the momentum, the um, the strides that we've taken. Uh, but of course, this is a, it's a sour way to finish because of the nature of the score. We've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, Joaquin came off at halftime. I don't think he finished a, a full 90 minutes in his time here in Minnesota this year. What do you need to see from him to be a guy that you can't take off the field? Yeah, we, we were very conscious on that side that we, we just lacked the, transition threat that that as the game materialized we felt like could be really important on that side so um obviously Tani and Joaquin are uh, sit at, at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of what they bring from an offensive perspective Joaquin is much more of a, a player that wants to combine and, and link on the left hand side Tani someone that's going to take space if he's given it so um we felt like at a goal down with that being uh probably our best chance of getting back into the game that we wanted to be really proactive in making that change. So again, it's not, uh, it wasn't a huge reflection of Joaquin's performance. It wasn't his performance was significantly worse than anyone else's performance. It was just the nature of um, us wanting to attack that side with, with real intent, pace and power. And obviously Tani being very comfortable on that side. Um, and also Tani um, being very strong from a, defensive perspective um certainly very willing very aggressive um a very good presser they attack of course really well on that side so um that's why we we opted to make that change but it's no real reflection of, of working performance but of course um mm -hmm. moving into next year we we want everyone to progress we want everyone to take more strides Joaquin influence in front of goal um assists chance creation on top of the the stability on the ball he brings us are you the type of coach that's going to take a little time off to let it breathe, or are you going to be working out your preseason training plans on the plate all? No, I'll take I'll take some time, and um, we I know full well that as a staff and as a club we'll look back at, at this year uh, really satisfied. I think whenever we would have gone out of this competition, we'd have left with uh, we'd have been left with a sour taste in. In your mouth, I think that's just the nature of uh, the way this season finishes. It's a cup competition that you feel like you can win. Of course, when you go out, you're going to be really disappointed. But I feel like once we have some time to breathe and we look back over the work that was done, the strides that everyone's taken, the, the strides that the club has taken as a whole, I think it's a, it's a really good season. It's a really impressive season. I've said to the players just then that I've, I've loved it from the perspective of... Um, of the the work day to day, the environment that's created, my development as a coach, the group's development, and I've I've loved it, and I look back with a lot of satisfaction from from day one to now, and and everything that went in between, and all the difficulty. But I particularly enjoyed this this last three months where we've been able to get this group to such a good place so quickly. Um, so I know when when the dust settles, everyone will will look back with with a real sense of satisfaction, and of course we prepared everyone prepared. I'm sure mentally for for this scenario arising, maybe not to this this extreme, but um, I think irrespective of what would have happened today, we, we would have been on balance, really happy with how this year has gone. You right, mentioned so the, the, one more question here. Appreciate it. You mentioned the, the extreme nature of today. What did you see from the players that showed the competitiveness, the, the anger about kind of how this one finished? after the game and how it might kind of propel them going forward. Yeah, well, they're really, they're really dis of course, really disappointed. It's a changing room in there that, that obviously reflects the scoreline, reflects going out of the competition, reflects the frustration of the game, I suppose, reflects the um, 
the feeling that you that you leave the pitch with when you finish with ten players and you haven't seen the ball for a long time. That's that's uh, it's a really unhappy group, but it is a group, and and everyone has seen it over the course of three months that um, for near enough every period of every game over a long time against uh, teams that are fighting for their lives or um, in situations where we have to win to keep our season going in a lot of senses that the group has always been competitive and produced. So um, I don't feel like there are huge question marks hanging over their head in that sense. We've obviously played a team that is incredibly difficult to play against here and their their record speaks for themselves. And um, certainly when when some of the things happen that happened tonight, giving early goals away, going down to 10 men, that, that leaves the group feeling like that is a really, really difficult game. Um, so I'm sure once, once some time passes, we will take the season on balance as a whole and, and we'll feel very good about it. All right, appreciate it. Eric? Thank you so much. Safe travels. Thank you. Minnesota. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, we've got defender Michael Boxel. Michael, thank you for joining us. You've got Andy and John on the line. John, can you start us off? Michael, can you put a sort of put a finger on what went wrong today? I'm just going to unmute it. Um, I'm a real well beaten. I think we... All the things that we, I mean, it's frustrating because all the things we kind of prepared for and spoke about, about where the dangers were, um, that's where we we didn't um, manage those moments well enough. And uh, yeah, when you concede as early as you do, you kind of really start on the back foot. And um, yeah, just things were emphasized throughout the season. We, we didn't do well enough on and um yeah, as I said, the things we were watching all week for and it happened how we how we, how we planned for, but we just didn't um, execute it as, as well as we should have. I know you guys wanted to, you know, take away the middle from Ricky. What what makes him so so good that he's able to keep finding those spots? Um, I mean his yeah, he just keeps moving. He yeah, obviously finds finds space as well. Um, even when he's getting balls off the back four, I think he's yeah, the way he can kind of fit the balls into areas um, that we kind of should have, should have have covered. It's yeah, obviously he's a good player, but we 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 spoke about how we could take away what he's good at, and I don't think we did what as as well as we should have tonight. Obviously, the club feels like it's been building something all year. Does this make it feel like there's a long way to go still? Um, yes and no. I think. Obviously, the scoreline was just it, just, it just really blew out. And when you're two rows down, you're trying to chase a little bit without um, running the risk. But I think it's, at that point in time, you got to kind of give it a go. And um, yeah, I think, it, I mean, maybe it is a bit of a reality check. I think we, obviously, leading into this, we, we were confident we could get the job done. But I think if we're going to do the things we plan to do with 70, 80%, then that kind of coming into a place like this against a team with decent attacking weapons. And I mean, you don't have to be, I mean, you have to play an all, not almost perfect game, but you have to do a lot better than we were tonight. Given how lopsided it was, I think Eric called it kind of an extreme scoreline. What did you see from teammates in the locker room to see, to show you how uh, unsettled they were just given how lopsided it was? You mean at, at the end of the game? Yeah, just in the locker room, what did you see from teammates about how this sat with them? Um, and maybe yeah. yourself, too. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's just disappointing the way, as I mentioned a few times, it's nothing that they did surprise us. We just weren't ready to, to match what um, what happened in those moments, I think. Yes, yeah, so obviously, a lot of disappointment where I feel like we – we sold ourselves short. Um, we, if we fought hard in the first half to get ourselves back in the game, um, especially when we've got so many traveling fans as well. So I think it's yeah, disappointing to kind of, does, does feel like we let them down. I think we've yeah, been so lucky all year with, with the support we got. Um, yeah, a lot of, bit of frustration, a lot of, a lot of disappointment in, in, uh, after that game tonight. All right, we've got uh, time for just two more questions. I'm good if you have anything else, Andy. Uh, Boxy, when you look at, at kind of uh, 
you know, the overall uh, kind of season and, and kind of where this club kind of started at and where they were in July, what, what kind of things do you, do you see in kind of overall big picture? Um, yeah, obviously it feels like the season had at least three different stages. Obviously the first part with Cam was promising and a lot of energy and, um, and then that kind of momentum carried over when Eric took over. And then obviously when we had, injury suspensions and a lot of people going on um, national team duty. It was, yeah, obviously a brutal summer for us. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the technical staff front office did to, to bring in who they brought in in that window. And I think the last two, three months, the boys worked extremely hard to kind of uh, get everything back on track. And I think we're, yeah, I think the last two, three months is probably a fair reflection of, of who we are as a team. And I think, Everyone that's um, coming back next year needs to make sure we everyone improves individually to, to come back and, and, and keep things pushing along. I think, um, yeah, we're not in the worst place, but I think tonight showed that um, we need to be, there's, we need to, to level, level up a bit. Boxy, just one more quick one. Do you think that this Galaxy team is capable of winning MLS Cup, just given the attacking talent they have? And is there any solace if they're able to go on a run and do that kind of, that kind of maybe gives you guys some you know, more respect to the fact that they went on and did that if if they do end up doing so? Um, no, I don't I don't care who wins it from here on out. Um, so what's the first part of the question? Just that do you think that they're capable of doing so? Are they are they that good? Um I don't know. I don't I don't I don't I haven't seen enough of the East and teams to to really I mean yeah, their front four can school goals against anyone but I think if they I think if, I mean I just think they need to if they're strong defensively I think they're, they're, they're giving themselves a chance um with with the front four that they have all right that'll time. be all for tonight thank you so much Michael so travels back just thank you guys Andy, we, John, we, thank we you the season so you guys have been great just thank you, thank you.